Hi, everybody. I hope you're enjoying the session so far at Chain React. I'm Kira, and I'm a software engineer at Microsoft, and I work on the React Native for Windows team. I've worked on this team for about four years, and I specialize in releases, testing, and accessibility. Now, if you were at Chain React last year, you might remember me. I was on stage with my colleague Shivan to talk all about the recent work Microsoft was doing on the React Native for Desktop platform. We also talked about how Microsoft was leveraging the platform in some of its key products, such as Office and the Windows operating system. I really enjoyed my experience last year as a speaker. I also loved the conversations I got to have with developers after our talk. It was really great to hear how many of you were excited by the React Native for Desktop platform and that our message that Microsoft has bet on React Native for Desktop landed. Now, in conversation after conversation, there was one comment that rang especially clearly. I heard, React Native for Windows sounds great. I'd love to give it a try on my product, but I use a Mac. Many of you were excited about React Native for Windows, but felt that you were unable to give the platform a try because you use a MacBook. Well, that brings us to today's topic. We've heard your comments and we've heard your feedback, and while using a Windows device will always be the best experience for developing Windows applications, <laughs> um, we also recognize that it's not always feasible for a development team to have multiple devices to develop for different operating systems. We also see that Macs are used widely within the React Native developer community. And so today, I'm back at Chain React to highlight that owning a Windows device is not a requirement to build and ship Windows applications. And today, in this talk, we're going to walk through exactly how to build React Native for Windows experiences from your Mac. So to build Windows experiences from a non-Windows device, we'll be leveraging virtual machine software. And you have a couple of options here, some of which include Parallels, VirtualBox, and Microsoft DevBox, just to name a few. Up next, we're going to take a look at a demo of my experience spinning up a Windows VM from a Mac. But before I dive into demos, I do want to mention that I wrote a blog post to go alongside this talk. So all of the information from this presentation will be covered there. And you'll have that as written documentation to reference later. So don't worry about capturing the required steps during the demos. All right, so let's take a look at our first video, which will show me using Parallels as my virtual machine software. So to get started using Parallels, I'll first head to the Parallels website. From here, I can either choose to purchase the software or I can decide to begin with a free trial. I'll go ahead and input my email and I'll be sent a link to download the software. From there, I can walk through all of the installation steps to install Parallels. Once I've installed Parallels, I'll then be prompted to install Windows 11. Once that's complete, I'll then be asked to supply a Windows license product key, which can be purchased from the Microsoft Store. And once I've submitted that key, my Windows VM is ready to be used. Here's my VM with all of my expected Windows applications. And if I wanted to begin React Native for Windows development, I could then head to the React Native for Desktop website. From there, I could click on our RNW dependency script and I can run that script in Windows Terminal. And this will install all of my required dependencies for React Native for Windows development, like Node, Yarn, and .NET. And once this script finishes running, I'm ready to begin RNW development. All right, so one cool factor that I learned about Parallels while I was experimenting was something called Coherence Mode. To enter Coherence Mode, you'll click on View, Enter Coherence. And what this mode will allow me to do is view my Windows applications directly alongside my Mac applications. So for example, I could now pull up Windows Terminal or Visual Studio, and I can see that these applications actually feel like Mac applications on my computer. So we'll spend the rest of the demo in coherence mode. All right, so for my sample today, I'm gonna use an app from the React Native Windows Samples repo. This is a simple calculator app that already has support for iOS, Android, and Windows. And to run the app, I'll reopen Windows Terminal, and I'll run NPX React Native Run Windows. And in a few moments, my application will launch. From here, I could begin interacting with my application just like I would on a Windows computer. So for example, if I wanted to make edits to my application, I can open up Visual Studio Code. Let's go ahead and say we want to change the number buttons to be purple background instead of white. I can make that change in Visual Studio Code, and when I hit Save, I'll see those changes load automatically. And there you have it. We have a React Native for Windows application running via a Windows VM on a Mac computer. 
It required a low level of overhead to get started, and I had a really enjoyable developer experience. From here, let's say I wanted to publish my calculator app to the Microsoft Store. I could also do that from my Windows VM. I would simply open up Visual Studio, and I can walk through the Create App Package set of steps. And at the end of this set of steps, I'll be given an MSIX file that I can then upload to the Microsoft Partner Center to get my app in the Microsoft Store. So from this first demo, we can see that in less than an hour, I was able to spin up a Windows VM on a Mac computer. We also saw that Windows VMs allowed me to quickly experiment with React Native for Windows development due to the low level of overhead to get my VM up and running. Now, let's say my team is ready for a larger level of investment in Windows. For example, let's say I now had multiple developers who were working on a React Native for Windows application via Windows VMs. In this scenario, Microsoft DevBox may become a better solution for me. Microsoft DevBox is an Azure product that allows developers to spin up a Windows VM from most modern devices, including MacBooks. Microsoft DevBox supports cloud-based virtual desktop infrastructure, project-based DevBox configuration, so code repositories or other tools could come pre-installed on my VM. It also supports region-specific DevBoxes, so I could have a high-fidelity experience from anywhere in the world. And finally, it supports secured cloud workstations via Microsoft Intune. Now, in today's talk, I won't have time to walk through the full set of steps for spinning up a VM using Microsoft DevBox, but let's take a look at a video of the product in action. So to set up a VM using Microsoft DevBox, there's two sets of tasks required. The first is gonna be to set up a DevBox service, and the second is to create a DevBox. On the screen now, we can see me walk through some of the steps to set up a DevBox service. Some of these steps include creating a Dev Center, a project, and a DevBox pool. And once I've created a DevBox service, my next step will be to create a DevBox. I'll then go to the Microsoft Developer Portal, and this is where I'll be able to create and launch DevBoxes. I can either choose to launch my DevBox in my browser, or I can download the remote desktop app to view my VM there. I'm gonna go ahead and use the browser for this demo. Awesome, and so with a couple of quick clicks, I now have a Windows VM running via Microsoft DevBox. From here, I'll go ahead and run that same sample app that we saw in the last demo, just to show a React Native for Windows application in action in a Microsoft DevBox VM. So something to note about Microsoft DevBox is that it does require a few admin steps to get started. So if you're looking to quickly experiment with React Native for Windows, Parallels or another virtual machine offering may be a good option to get started with. And then once you're ready to grow your Windows VM usage across multiple developers to build enterprise experiences, then Microsoft DevBox may become a better solution for you. All right, so today we took a look at two options for spinning up a Windows VM from a Mac. And as I close out my content for today, I wanna highlight a few key takeaways. Number one, you can build React Native Windows apps without a Windows device. And number two, you can get started from your Mac using VMs like Parallels and Microsoft DevBox. Now, on this slide here, I have my final takeaway, which is to please give Windows VMs and React Native for Windows a try. Um, we've got lots of links on the screen here that you can take a photo of, including the link to the blog post that I mentioned earlier in the presentation. If you'd like to chat more with the React Native for Desktop team during the conference, you can find us outside in the lobby on the second floor at our React Native for Desktop booth. And if you'd like to connect with us more online, you can find us at the following socials or on GitHub at Microsoft slash React Native Windows. Before I finish up, I do want to give a quick call out. Tomorrow, we're going to be hearing from my colleagues, Shivan and Nikolai. They're going to be giving a talk on Office's latest usage of, of React Native for desktop in Microsoft Word. And with that, thank you so much and have a great rest of your day at Chain React. <laughs>